So today's show, Julie Bowen. <laughs> I was gonna go Julie Bowen. Okay, good. We'll start over. <laughs> no, don't start over. <laughs> I was inspired by your Julie Bowen. What what song is that? It's James Bond. Oh, okay. Do 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 Bowen. I'm telling you. Julie deaf. Bowen. Come on, wake up. Come on. We got to get this I just podcast didn't know that going. Too. So she is uh, Modern Family. She's done a million things. Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore. Mm-hmm. A lot of movies. Mm-hmm. She's what I would call a kick in the pants. She is a lot of fun. She's a pistol. She was funny the whole time. Uh, she made fun of me the whole time we dated in the old days. And so. Wait a minute. What? What was that? What was it about? Dated who? Dated what? Mm-hmm. So this mm-hmm. is one of David's. Ex well, girlfriends, but friends. Yeah, we're we're still friendly, yeah. and I don't see her really much because she lives in the valley. Gross. But um, no, we're still friendly, and she's always funny to talk to. Is she um mm-hmm. bust my balls the whole time, which you thought was funny. She was cons- I was just barrel laughing yeah. the whole time. I was bent over with tears of joy. <laughs> no, she is. She was just funny. Yeah. Uh, this one is just a lively, energetic, funny, yep. funny little visit with Mrs. Ms. Julie Bowen, who you know, she, I had never really met. Yeah. And so I just enjoyed her company. I thought she was so cool. She just produced a, uh, a movie, Prom Pact. Bless you. Uh, and she has this preteen skincare brand called JB Scrub. Do you know that? It gets your pits. Uh, no, I, I wouldn't use preteen skin yeah, products, would I? I've never you? heard of that. You're 14. No, <laughs> yeah, that's a teenager. No, this is, tell it's tell it serious. It gets your pits, butts, and nuts. That's the hook. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Pits, butts, and nuts? Yeah. With a JB smooth cream? JB Scrub. JB Scrub. And by the way, pits- 15% off. If you put fly friend 15, that's So for our audience that is 12, is this for who's yeah. this? Or for their kids. Or for the kids. Okay. Mm-hmm. So it's JB Smooth, Pits, Butts, and Nuts. Oh. <laughs> speaking, of y- speaking of young, someone thought I was 48 recently. <laughs> what? Your mom? It's that young. It's not even young. JB Scrub. And uh, it's not to be confused with JB Smooth. Hey, I got something for this. <clears throat> oh, these are my jokes. Remember, JB Scrub, rub a dub dub. No. You could say in the tub. I set it up for you. Yeah. Oh, I didn't say it again. <laughs> JB Scrub. JB Scrub, oh. rub a dub dub in the butt. It was close. Oh. <laughs> let, you know what? Let's, let's let her tell you yeah. about everything. Here's Julie Bowen. Blabbing Julia with these two Bowen idiots. and wait till the fireworks start to happen between young David and Ms. Julie Bowen. No, she's Stay trying tuned. to start trouble with me, and I just I'm such a it's some stuff happened on this particular episode that's never happened on other episodes. I'll put it that way. Stop your car, don't even drive listening to this one. <laughs> Pull over and call in sick of work. So serious. Oh wait, why am I in like a tiny chair? Why is uh, that she? was intentional. We want to feel. Is low. she low? This is, this is like a. This is like a. Um, a <laughs> teacher parent conference. <laughs> wanna, wait, Julia's no, being very. The ones around the kitchen table are really yeah, will you grab higher. one more? I'll grab one. Oh, thanks, Greg. So much. I don't know what's going on. Look like the same height. You look like Megan that movie, Megan. Megan. <laughs> yeah. She's a, yeah, she's a I don't know the Megan dance. Low. She's eleven year old sex doll. <laughs> <laughs> Why did they make I Megan such a sex slut? doll? Was I meant to mention within thirty-two seconds. Why did, they, why did they make Megan into an eleven-year-old sex doll? Well, That's a good question. I don't know if the robot needs a Kylie Jenner lip kit. <laughs> did you see? She has like eyeshadow. She's like, I'm Megan. I'm like, that's not the movie, is it? For the teenage girl audience, I'm having a candy bar. I think thing. it's for the. I don't think it's for the teenage girl. I think God, it's teenage boy I have te- three teenage no, boys, boys yeah, and boys. trust me, they are all spending a lot of time in the shower after that one. <laughs> after Megan. After Megan. Hey, save some water. <laughs> they're, they're, they're there were like, five boys in our, or four boys in our, my family. Four? Which four. one were you? I was the youngest, yeah, so I got, tiny. you know. Oh, so that. they ignored you. No, not necessarily. We no, took, but in a we good took, way. Well. Thank you so much. 
My this. sister's possessed oh, that we like all bullied up. her. They go, Lori, we were all in our own lane. We were all Wait a minute, just there were four boys and, and a girl? A, a little baby girl. How Catholic are you? <laughs> Protestants. Oh. <laughs> I'm a Protestant. We don't have sex and we don't make a lot of kids. Five, five, my mom had five kids by the time she was three. 31. You have three, though, don't you? Anyway. I have three, but I had two at once. That was, you know, oh, that's not right. on that's purpose. That's not your fault. That's not your fault. That's not my fault. When did you know they were twins? You're having twins. Uh, I knew, uh, you know what? I'm not a hippie and I'm not like super fruity, but I'd had one kid. <laughs> All right, Shut I, the I, fuck up, David. I can already see you. <laughs> like, yeah. like, he rolled his eyes. I'm not fucking super fruity. No, but I not. did have a dream when I was pregnant. And I woke up and I said to my then husband, there's more than one. I could, I just I had this crazy dream. He goes, there better hadn't be. I go, you're coming to this appointment with me today. And we went in and that was the day they're looking around and stuff. And they're like, there's, there's one. There's, more there's one. two. There's the other one hiding. And he goes, he looked at me like, you fucking witch. What have you done? Like, how did you make, how did you create two babies in you on purpose? I think it safely was going to be harder on you than him. I don't know. My breastfeeding kept him up at night. Kept what does that mean? <laughs> he used to tell me he goes breast. You breastfeeding is hard because it keeps me up at night. <laughs> <laughs> What's hard on him? It's hard. Oh, no, I, he was joking. He My was, dad would go tough life. Uh, tough life, hey, baby. So how do you two know each other? I get a sense you have had your friends, right? You know each other. I know her. I'm just from, guessing. Yeah. I don't know. Yes. Well, why don't you tell him? Why don't you tell him, David? Why don't you tell your friend Dana? How you know? Yeah, me. what is going on here? I mean, I'm just, I, I'm just, I'm a fly on the wall right I now. I met Julie, I think, at a uh, Golden Globes party. Is that possible? Golden Globes party, uh, mm. HBO Golden Globes party. You were Steve Levitan. Oh, I was uh -huh. Steve Levitan. You were wow. there for. You'd been nominated for. Um, just shoot me. Mm, mm -hmm. Second time, yeah. I'm so sorry. We're not See, keeping track. Now, now he's like, he's like, I don't know when was it. Second time. So you sure it wasn't the first time, David? No, I. You know what? I mix it up. It's all jumbled. It it's seems all like jumbled. Every year. It was one of Did those you awards. Win an Emmy? I can't remember. I don't remember. Whoops. I don't think it's about Whoops. that. I sorry, think it's it doesn't make you a better person. <laughs> Did when? you wait, wait, David? Did you win an Emmy for Just Shoot Me? I honest. I did not. Okay. It doesn't make you inferior. Others of Julie, us we'll get win to Emmys. Your, it doesn't matter. Well, I was back when those Emmys really meant something. I would something. have given you yeah, an Emmy. Yeah, back when they meant something. <laughs> yeah, now they just hand them out like candy. I think you got handed to. I think you got right. Uh, 2011, was that the pandemic? And uh, <laughs> 2000. <laughs> yeah, I got one of those that pandemic was the COVID Emmys. Ones, yeah. I got a COVID no, Emmy. How many nominations like, for Modern Family? Just say it. I don't know. For six, something like that. Was it six, six? for me or the show? Six nominations. You know what, mm -hmm. Julie? Honestly, I thought you hosted SNL twice, and it's you've I've voted never two fucking. Emmys. No, I won Have you two heard Emmys, of the show? and I've never <laughs> hosted SNL. No, I would never host SNL. You kidding me? That is terrifying. I watch it now. Also. I, I'm kind of into like right now how you guys watch SNL every week, right? Nope. Or no, we have seen. I see. I see it on Instagram. They have I clips. Stay of each up that sketch. Late. We'll see clips. Oh. I'll go. You know, on Sunday you can go on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you can go and, on and watch on, all the sketches, right? Yeah. And watch all of it. But I the guests this year in particular are like it's like complete. It's all new. Like there's none of the none of the classics. You know, you, there's no there's no we Tom Hanks. It's oh the guests uh, the host. the hosts yeah. yeah yeah all the mm -hmm. all the hosts and so the when I watch it now I'm like oh I could maybe do it now because the it's just like they're much nicer and warmer it seems like and it Who feels is? like <laughs> I don't know it feels like the, you used to have to come on and kill in the. Uh, in oh, your opening okay. monologue. That's an interesting observation. <laughs> so now the hosts don't <laughs> no, have to be. No, they very... they are they are really funny, but it's uh, it's much more gentle no, and kind about right. that. They're like, I'm so honored to be here. This is yeah. so exciting. It's it emotional seems like there's a, almost yeah. serious. Yeah, a little yeah, political like, statement. Yeah, and and a little bit of like. This is, you know, what SNL meant to them growing up and mm -hmm. how much it means to them to be there now. Yeah. Like even, you know, Liev Schreiber did a whole like, this is such a big deal to me. And I was like, huh? And Martin Short is on top of a piano. I yeah, exactly. Love exactly. He's, like, he's crushing yeah, da, da, so da, 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 da. <laughs> Right. And so the it's greatest. not as hard on the jokes as mm -hmm. it was back when it yeah. would have been. Did they reach enough. out to you? I would imagine um, during they your ten years or eleven years, there was there was a a there soft. There was some because you soft, weren't on NBC. They're pretty loyal. You were not on NBC, right? You're ABC or no? I was uh, on NBC when David um, tracked me down. 
I don't and know. And that if that's was that other show. That Ed. was Ed. I Ed. did a show called Ed. And oh, that is the terminology. Yes. Yeah, tracked. Me. I was doing Ed when you were doing. So he's, he stalked you. He stalked me. Oh, we were at this. I was with Willie Garson. Oh, R. Willie Garson. Yes, was and that. That's really okay. Funny. He was on. He invited me as. He's like. I've had this said to me more than once. You look like somebody who's got a nice dress hanging in the closet. It's like the day before some award show. <laughs> Clearly, everyone else has dropped out. Could you possibly chuck on your dress and show up? That wasn't me. That was Willie. No, that was Willie. Okay, yeah. So I went with mm-hmm. Willie, and you were there with Steve, Steve Levitan, and you was, walked mm-hmm. by me and then walked right back again and go, Hey, I, do I know you? I, I know you. Hey, what's up? Uh, what's up? Uh, and I said, No, you, no. I think I said, Do we have the same barber? <laughs> <laughs> Spade has she had a the short best haircut. pattern no, I, with women. I no. mean, just just even the flight attendant or whoever. You do. You have a good. They like the because funny. Funny matters. My family. When matters. I started dating David, oh. my yes. family was okay, like, here we go. "Oh dear God!" Okay. They're like, "What?" And I said, "Funny counts." I don't need to hear behind. Funny the counts. Scenes. That's the name of your next book. <laughs> <laughs> funny counts. They go. Does it count? That much? Funny counts. <laughs> funny it counts a lot because you, like Laura Michael said once, <laughs> you, you can't marry a face. And because we, eventually you, could, right. you don't even see the face. You, <laughs> so you have to marry a personality. Right. What's better than someone that makes you laugh all day long? Right. David. So David David tried to track me down through, but this is where he shot the what bed. What channels Are we allowed to swear on your show? Sure. What the fuck? I don't think we can say track me down again, but we can swear. <laughs> How did he, what kind of tracking device did he use? Was it a private detective? He ha- no, a publicist. <laughs> okay. Which was such a fucking C minus. I want to be tracked well, well, down, listen, though. Isn't it flattering to be tracked down have, a little bit? Not by a publicist. Uh, he, well, Julie, we there's no a, other way. By telegram? When I you mean, figured out, when you figured out that, because first I told you I was a, d- a dog walker. Okay. Because you were like, I know you. I go, uh, no. No. Because I and I was like, if he doesn't know, me, what am I going to give you my resume? No, right. you had no idea who I was. You just you did the right thing. Thought I was cute. I said I was a dog walker. Mm-hmm. You're like, mm. and That's then I ran into you another party somewhere, and then the next thing I knew, I had you did track me down through. You figured out I would, had been happy Gilmore with Sandler. Uh, okay, mm-hmm. Babatu. But I Baba Thu. We, anytime he's mentioned, I try to do that. <laughs> and <laughs> she did the best. But you didn't. Thing. You she didn't did bother to go through Adam. You didn't go through anybody personal. I didn't think I want Adam knowing my personal business. So what, this oh, is okay. a Conan Johnson PR firm and we're looking for right, Ms. No, Julie No, it was Bowen. literally this woman, uh, I don't remember her name, but he, she tracked me down. I had a bunch of, a, a couple calls from her. <sighs> David would like to talk to you. David like, to, and I was like, fuck that. It's they would like to see in his office. You literally were, fuck that? Well, I, I got- <laughs> it's just, like, fuck that. Yeah, publicist? You were on Ed, yeah. right? I was on Ed. It was not a lascivious fuck that. It was no, like, it was not yeah. like, I'm going to fuck that. No, it was, it was a- <laughs> No, it was not that, that for sure. It was not- not that. It was not that. I and know, then, but that you did that perfectly. Was I funny. was living in New York in this building. Uh, I remember I was in the gym really early, watching TVs with no, you know, they had with no, Sound. no volume. And I see that you had been uh, tased by oh Skippy. Uh, well, okay, that's so, a story, story we have not explored. On you haven't explored this on this podcast. It's been mentioned though. Oh, David was tased by Skippy. I know the whole story. Tased and beaten. Well, Taze was the beginning to disarm me, disarm the, the muscular. It was, was a night of terror. My attention, did I mention that the volume was not on on the TVs? I was doing my best. So what did you What did you? So then I was like, where? Silence. Anyone who gets Taze, I'm going to go to Arby's with. Yeah, I definitely. I No, I was like, now where was that scrap of paper I wrote down for the publicist giving me his number? <laughs> that so asshole. I called him and I was like, hey. Yeah, that's when you called me about that's that? That's when I called you. I go, hey, it it's You Julia had your Hurd. opener. Are you all right? I just saw you got tased by Skippy and you said, now will you go out with me? No, I said, no, my mom, well, I realized my dick's still working because I got all excited. I'm sorry. Can we take <laughs> what, that was out? It not, actually was actually didn't it say working? that. Well, wait a minute. Was it, di- you said no, dick working? I just said, you said, now I said, will you who? go out with me? Now will you go out with me? Sounds more like David. Now will you, now will no, you go out with I me? Said, I had to get tased to no, get a date. After I was laid up for a while in very pain, I uh, mm-hmm. started to come to my sense. I don't even remember these calls because it was- It the, was so much pain. So much calls, so much pain. I didn't even know about Viking until right after this. So uh, 
<laughs> anyway, you knew about Vicodin I hate by the Vicodin. time we went oh, on did? a date. Mm. Yeah, you were little V chippies. Yeah, okay, yeah, maybe. I remember a lot of that. Oh yeah, I had a puka shell made of Vicodin. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> you just eat, thing, you ate your necklace today. Everybody needs to know about David is that he's the most like sensitive, um, delicate flower who mm-hmm. has low blood sugar, okay. has to carry around a little rat bag full of like. Turkey and oh, chicken. Oh, there's protein bars no. all over this mansion. And and they're every and corner. like even <laughs> it's though like he, having a puppy, <laughs> he wants to go like party, but it's at like six p.m. Six thirty. <laughs> in bed at in bed at eight forty five. But damn. we're kindred and, spirits. We like to eat at four three thirty. We asked the restaurants to open so we could go at like, four o'clock. Hello? But that's when I was on Conan. and he goes, "This was." few months back he goes well you've been doing this podcast with spade how, how would you describe him <laughs> and i did not prepare for that answer but the first word that came in my head was gentle oh fucking kill isn't that right? kind of cute but that's exactly what i'm saying he's like a gentle sensitive soul yeah. who doesn't want to admit the greatest story that david ever told me was i'm telling all your stories julie went to brown university Shut up. she graduated and so uh, did marcy klein <laughs> oh, okay go ahead but didn't know her there no, never go met ahead. her once what did i do no you told me this story once about <laughs> like hooking up with a girl Jesus. when you were doing you were living out here you weren't on SNL yet you hooked yeah. up with some girl you were so excited and you spent the night at her house and you didn't want to tell her about your low blood Ailments. sugar mm-hmm. and I think you got up in the morning to go get coffee or something or breakfast and you passed out in line mm-hmm. waiting because your blood sugar was so low and you were so embarrassed so ever since then uh, well that happened at SNL in front of Sherry O'Terry at lunch it happened with <laughs> At Taco Bell when I was going to meet Sandler and those guys that play tennis in the valley. At Taco Bell, I, I slid on the ground and slept on the ground and was out. I think that was also because I found a dog tooth in my burrito, so no one knows exactly what the problem was. <laughs> you did not find yeah. a dog tooth. <laughs> I think. No, you didn't. I didn't even take it back. Well, why they just kept chewing? Because <laughs> they just shrugged their shoulders. But uh, Spade passed out. Was a thing I passed out. I used to pass out more, but now I don't. Now I. Keep but I think eye people it. think that you were like snarky and like lecherous. No, that was, was the nice. persona, the comic persona from that's, Update. Well, basically. that's me on Update uh, in every TV show and every movie. So that's where it gets and, a little blurry, right? Yeah. Right. What are you? What are you sketching over there, David? I'm just signing my will. That's when, <laughs> when he's nervous. <laughs> he I'm just nervous. starts. I'm he's doodling. Why are you nervous? Because we haven't gotten to anything except the fact that I should be in a stretcher at all times. <laughs> <laughs> what are you trying to Look, get to? Is there something? I, know, I don't know. Is what there something gonna, you we're need? We're not to... trying to get anywhere. We've been, <laughs> what we've been at this for like, a year and a half, and, and you're not trying you to get are, to anything. No, no you're no, great. We're, you're a superstar. I was going to ask you, how do you deal with that emotionally when yes. people come up to you because you were going along famous and Modern Family was a smash, maybe mm. the latest or last super yeah. si- situation. Yeah, last one, yeah. I'd say, yeah. And then you're famous yeah. and people come up to you and go, I can't believe it's talking to you. Yeah. How do you process that? You go, yeah, what's up? Well, no, I, I was pregnant with, with the twins when I during the pilot of Modern Family mm-hmm. and I gave birth birth may 7th was we got picked up a little early and i was okay. waiting i was in labor i'm in the hospital and my phone's ringing I'm between contractions i'm a little bored you know there's like there's time between contractions Always on your so phone. i answer the phone fuck you and i answer the phone and it's it. steve levitan <laughs> and he goes julia God, it's exciting news we we got picked up we got picked up early they're going to show the whole pilot at upfront this is a really big deal and i'm like mm-hmm. oh my god that's great he goes you got to come to upfront so i go ah <laughs> he said, what are you doing? That was your I, celebration. I go, I'm in labor. She's in labor. Uh, mm. And he goes, you're in labor and you answer the phone. I was, it was a quiet moment. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. but the point being that <laughs> I literally at the exact same time the Modern Family was happening, I went from having one kid to three babies. And oh, so you didn't. Yeah. I, it was like I was in a fugue state. And people would come up to me and talk to me. And I was like, I hadn't mm-hmm. slept. I hadn't eaten. I was exhausted all the time. Um, but the pickup is one thing, but then the fact that it, did it come out of the gate huge? I think it did. Yeah. Because I remember hearing about the pilot that it was big. Because mm-hmm. you mentioned you Steve mad. Levitan in our meat uh, story, but Steve, if you don't know, was my boss on at the time at Just Shoot Me and he was yours at- Are you saying Modern that to Family. you, the listener? Because you, yes. you think I don't know that. No, I'm telling no, you, the no, listener. To, to, to okay, the, the college kids are going, how do we get in show business? <laughs> hey, gang. No, Julie, Steve your Levitan. boss's name was Steve Levitan. You won't remember this, but Steve he was there Levitan for 10 years. Steve Levitan produced- just shoot just me. Just shoot me. And Modern Family. And Modern Family. And how many homes does Steve own yeah. today? Uh, 
I can secret. count four, three, four. Is he full private jet? If he had no, his money, I'd throw mine away. So well, you know Maybe what? At least divorce in California is not. Oh, a divorce. Com- he got divorced. So they I usually get seventy percent. They, a premium. They get se- are you divorced? No, no, I, I'm not rich enough to get divorced. <laughs> Sorry, honey, she's listening. <laughs> no, but you you split everything, and then there's and then alimony. You, so it so aggregate yeah. over time. I heard this from other divorced men, not myself. I've been married for 71 years. No, divorced men, divorced men. Yeah. Ooh. Well, Julie is in a Julie is in an odd situation. That's not typical. I, it just seems like it's a oh, little I sexist see. to think that only only men are paying. Oh, oh wait a minute! Go. I, I, no, no, that was me not feeling the other. We rumors are that Tom Arnold made a, a tidy sum uh-huh. from Roseanne Barr. Sure, you go. So there you go. You're the go Roseanne. Go. I'm there all in favor of Roseanne. both ways. <laughs> fuck you. Whichever so spouse has the money you shall pay. You count he who has yeah. the money shall. She yeah. or he who has the money shall pay. Yes. Yes. So I don't know if Steve has a, a private jet. I, I've rich. never, never heard of it. He, when I just sold my house, he came and looked at it. That's what I heard. Yeah. Did he what, buy what, it? What was it up for? I said, you want this for like the kids or something? Like a Like a little house? shack? Yeah, a little Like a stabbing shack. cabin? Yeah, a little stabbing to... cabin. I know that phrase. That's one of his favorite. <laughs> stabbing cabin. Stabbing, stabbing cabin, cabin up in Truesdale. <laughs> what is the origin of stabbing cabin quickly? It's just a funny term it's I heard Isn't it from the way. 1930s? It's about a place you have an affair with? I heard it's an agent place... say it. A shack for shagging. Yeah, it's a shagging shack. It's, yeah. I've yeah, heard it a maybe. bunch of different places. It's funny. I think some agent told me, he goes, well, I live out in Malibu. I got a stabbing cabin in town. I go, what? <laughs> then I sort of did the math in what my head. I go, oh, point. I have a stabbing cabin. <laughs> it's a stabbing cabin. Well, it's a great phrase. It is. I think it's just to have a great phrase. Mistress, mm-hmm. yeah. It's you don't fun. have to have mistress to have a stabbing cabin. So do you want to hear about our first date? Go ahead. Oh, I want to hear everything I can about you two because David is, uh, you know, my partner and mm-hmm. really good friend. And I love to hear about him as a boyfriend. What, uh, he showed up at- Julia's was- fluent in Italian. <laughs> she is nice try. At your notes. He showed up at my um, apartment <laughs> in New bizarre. York uh, after doing Letterman, and it was Halloween, and you had a clip in, colorful, Ooh, like blue or black hair clip in. Uh, yeah, because you left it on the floor, and you had a tiny bottle of Jack Daniels in your sock. Mm. And I was like, that's cool. Some of this, is, <laughs> half of that sounds like <laughs> flask. Wait, you think that's cool, Dana? Well, you see, anybody, I mean, it's so illicit to have like, a, I'm just going to get a pop. You well, know? Because a, he's, yeah. like, that's all he could, like, he's he's a gentle soul. Right. He's I a was, gentle drinker, I too. Do, yeah, I do about a little I, bit. Back then, I could do about three drinks a night, but I do two now. But that was, uh, Jack Daniels, I don't drink anymore. I drink vodka. But that that was a little too sugary, bless my heart. It was too... It but it, you but kept it's, a it's, little tiny airplane yeah, bottle in your sock. I'd keep my socks, yeah. It's a lab experiment. <laughs> when <laughs> David gets a cocktail, there's a Diet Coke, right? Yeah. And then yep. you get the Tito's neat. And then you're mixing and matching and yeah. pouring and pouring. Just to I get... So I don't that. get... But I used to get the hangover so bad. So now I just want to get a buzz. I don't want to get so fucking, like, collapsing. <laughs> so I think it's a combo of uh, being a puss and being... Uh, a loser? There's, it's some sort of doctor's <laughs> told me. A lightweight? Really. A puss a plays a loser? Yeah, something a like that. Fragile. A so what happened on this first date? He yeah, shows up, happened? he's got the bow in his remember. hair, he's got Jack Daniels in his he's sock. Got, he's got clip-in hair extensions, okay, and he's got it. Jack Daniels in his sock. clear. It had a bow stricken, in it. It was a stricken. bow. No, what do you mean stricken? It wasn't stricken. extensions. They were... It was for Halloween. Oh, maybe something fun. You had gone on Letterman on Halloween because I was like, okay. what's happening with your wore, yeah. hair? And you're like, it was Halloween. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. And then uh, he just started a constant stream. A barrage of funny came at me. Uh-huh. Absolutely. For One about 45 best. minutes. And I, <laughs> next thing I knew, I was naked. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> how the fuck did that happen? He wore you down. <laughs> Literally. So you endorphinized. <laughs> you completely relaxed. Mm. And by the time he's reaching for buttons and stuff, you're like, whatever. Now, I don't even yeah. know. I'm laughing. Yeah. Laughed all the way. Laughed all the way through. Did don't you laugh? say laugh through st- I did laugh through sex. Oh, okay. Because come on. <laughs> well, that's not okay. Great. That's a whole other story. No, that's not. No, that's the good for idea. our podcast. It should slow down right toward that part. It could be nope. fade out on that. <laughs> nope. Nope. No. no, it was funny because I remember calling my sisters the next funny. day. I go. Ah. Is sex good? She, no. Go, what did you say funny? to your sister? I said. It, it, they said making... I said I saw the day was fade last night. Mm. They're like, oh no, and I said he's funny. Funny counts. Why is everyone fucking funny against counts? It? That's the name of this episode. But you know, when I came and so we saw you New Year's <laughs> Eve. I, when we'd been seeing each other for a while, and I, Molly, my sister, and I came to see you in at the Delano. We were oh, yeah, somewhere we in Miami, Delano, yeah. right? We stayed at the Delano, and 
she laughed so hard in that performance. She, she leaned over to me at the end and she goes, I'd fuck him. <laughs> yeah, Molly. Uh, that was see, years comedians later. all over America. That it, there are chuckle Funny fuckers counts. out there. I'm not a chuckle fucker. <laughs> a chuckle fucker is that a people <laughs> that go out with you are chuckle fuckers? No, they're not. Yes, they are. <laughs> no, I'm so you know you're funny. how serious you're and grim funny. I am. No, you're not. You're like, very mm. funny. No, mm. you think this is about looks? You are very funny. David. So you seduced each other comedically. You have no. two Emmys versus quid. my zero. That really fucking burned my onion. I it was doesn't mean you're not great if you don't have an Emmy. We have Emmys. Quit we... saying, oh, you dragged yourself into it? <laughs> doesn't mean we're... What? Oh, what? Dana, what? How, many, how many Emmys do you have? God, two, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it, six nominations. Look, we need to move on. <laughs> David, you are a superstar. <laughs> I don't think I was with Julie when they announced at the Emmys, David Hyde Pierce, and I started to get up. <gasps> you should have won one. It was so one. sickening. You would have fucking blocked me. And you were like, me. God. I go, David, I wear that guy. Yo! Are you serious? Yeah, it was good though because it was a good wake up call. <laughs> Why did I think I could win? That's the thing. What I know, oh, yeah. I, I was I was oh, laughing. A, yeah. I was laughing oh, no, really was loud, good, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to like. I didn't want to blow out your mic. Professional. No, I'm, you want to, to and but but. David, okay, back to fine. I'll let you ask questions. Well, I love yeah. that story. Julie, and when we <laughs> well, when we went to the, the commercial, you were naked. Uh, I know you in did. The story, you. Yeah. You just, it was like a wall of words. It was it was like getting roofied by humor. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've, I've seen him do that where it's just tumbling, tumbling, tumbling it, it, with it, all it, these one-liners and references. Uh, and it is a barrage. Well, you have to be on. the same uh, uh, frequency of humor. And then and you're I, laughing. I'm which laughing. Is oxygen a great right? audience, yes. And, yeah, I was laughing and laughing. But that was about the last time we went on a, we were at a date alone. Because oh, then it was always, you, you always brought somebody. Yeah. Got silent. Oh, yeah. oh. He well, always I brings, say, he always brings people on dates. Well, yeah, yeah, the worst we, we is when Sandler found out about us going out because then these two will uh, gang up against. Sabathu. We have time for one more question. Uh, <laughs> this you is cut all of this out. Aren't you, you were on ER where you did a strong turn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about strong turns. <laughs> what was the what? I have these kinds of questions that don't involve. That. I know. Well, I wanted to just let Should the we... audience know about her career okay. with the Happy Gilmore of it all. We do have to just yes. because it's exciting because we just did world. that thing for Adam. Because yeah. I did that. Yeah. Because yeah, you were at the dinner. By the way, I watched your uh, your Kennedy Center strong. Oh yeah. Turn off the cameras for a moment. That was really, really <laughs> the good. That's a joke. That's yes. a good oh, starter. Let's try to tell it. You can only use it once. It was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Did Conan you... liked that one. That it was really good. Uh, thank that you very much for watching joke. that. And uh, we had a blast out there. We saw you at the dinner before. The yeah. intimate dinner for 200 people. The intimate dinner for 200. I call it the B list. It was it was it was the movie. It was the spillover. Room. It was the spillover. It was the it was the <laughs> LA crew oh. that was not going to be invited. Did you wait, Dana? Did you go to DC? I was there. Oh, sorry. So we, you were a list. Never crossed. You were there. No, you were in DC. I was. You were right. at the no, dinner too. No, but you too. were also at the dinner. We oh, were at Hillcrest. the dinner. Yeah, yeah I'm at I was dinner. Was just like the, yeah. And then I went to DC. I was like the, you know, yeah, the, the low dinner level. was a Did was just an Italy old school post? call sheet of all his movies combined. Right. Exactly. Because it was you were from Happy Gilmore and Hubie Halloween, and then Dennis Dugan did both of those, right? Yeah. Directed. And no, no, Dennis Dugan didn't direct Hubie. He didn't. No. Mm-mm. Do you remember who did it? Hurley? No. Uh, hang on. Give me a second. Don't, don't do this. <laughs> I think me. it was Dennis. So embarrassing. No, no. I, would th I would fucking know if it was Dennis. I know Goosen did pickups. No. Yes, he did pickups, but it was... Someone has the internet. They'll figure it out. I Heather? Bob? Will you no. find out who directed uh, Hubie Halloween? Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> Brill? You make Brill. Quite a, Brill. Steve Brill. Yeah, Brill. Steve Brill mm -hmm. has directed Brill a lot of Happy Madison yeah. movies. He did a lot of them, yeah. Right. Yeah. Steve Brill. Okay. So you did Happy Gilmore <clears throat> and Hubie Halloween. Right, for, for Adam. Happy Madison. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Happy Gilmore. Do you get uh, recognized? Do you get asked about that? You must get recognized a lot from that. From Happy Gilmore? Most people are like, oh, I didn't realize that was you because I look like a... I looked like I was 50 in that movie. <laughs> you had a spade haircut for sure. I the, I, it was like a princess dye, like frosted <laughs> and like sprayed into place. We were in Canada. We had lovely crew, but like I've got sad white trash hair that wants to like run back to the trailer. I think it looks pretty cool. Your hair looks good. Now. Every afternoon. It, like, so they just, they wanted to be, you know, I was, nobody knew who I was and that was fine. They wanted to 
get my hair done in the morning. They never have to touch it again. Mm -hmm. So it was like this orb, like I could turn my head and it would come after me, you know, like, (laughs) and it was, it was, it was like a helmet. And I thought, oh, it's bad, but no one's going to see this movie. It's okay. Let's be honest. No, 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 I thought no one was going to see the movie. I thought it'd be like, we're like a Billy, a Billy Madison, which was really, really fun. And like a lot of people saw it, but it wasn't like a humongous thing. Well, it was like, yeah, it it grew. But it's already building. Yeah, Yeah. that was when it was building. Right. Did anyone refer to it as a turkey? During, what? during filming, yeah, that feels that sounds very specific and personal, Dana. Tur- I just feel old guys here. This turkey ain't gonna fly. You know? <laughs> I just heard it as a figure of speech from old teamsters. Look, kid, you're in a turkey. You're in a turkey. Good luck with yeah, it. It's all right. I was, I think, on Lost and Found when the, when the camera guy goes, "Hey, get him next time." I go, "What, what does that <laughs> mean?" The whole time we did the best. The whole movie's not even done yet. Nah, come on. <laughs> you, well, you know, we're all gonna learn from tell this one. You I'm everything. Like, mm. That feels like yeah, they because they know they're like in the side not laughing. They're not laughing. Part of movies, you do the first rehearsal at eight a.m. You get all the chuckles. By the time it's on your shot, twelve hours later, (laughs) yeah, you burned out. It's like Dresden in there, okay? But I mean, why then? Why don't you direct? Do you direct your own stuff? Now I do. Yeah, yeah, I can't do anything with someone. And like, keep it in two shots because who wants a close up? I like two shots. Well, that's why everyone loves dailies back in the day because you could see the white. This is so funny. Then it's cut into a million pieces. Too many it doesn't cuts go from bad. funny to less funny. It goes to not funny. Right. Yeah. So, no, I'm in total <laughs> control of my career. Look at this. I say whatever I want. Right. No, obviously, you, you're the master of your own domain. Yes. I can see that you have an empire. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Uh, Two shots I love. Antonio's Deli Productions have a production company with my sons. And yours is called? Bowen and Sons. Is that to do with your sons? My sons? That- no, I just always thought it was funny. Well, I mean, my sons like are twice. Like my a store a little... in a small town. Yeah, like Bowen and so I don't know. No, it's yeah. funny. It's a, yeah, it's like yeah, a it's big hilarious. corporate. We're, you know, <laughs> we're dying. Incorporated. We're dying this no, this this is the best podcast I've ever been a part of because it's it's like a pinball machine. I love it. We're just going all over. Oh, that's me. I'm really sorry. If you guys had like a direction you need to go, I can no, be quiet. Be in the moment. No. Okay, because I can really, I can do, um, I can be quiet and like answer questions. If no, you no, want. this is new. I mean, we, we are done a lot. A lot of these, you're 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 okay. in your own flavor, right. your own lane, your stuff with David. Well, I guess who's your favorite interview, interview been so far? Favorite interview so far? Don't what? ask us that shit. You know Come what? I, I guess it relates to you only because it was yeah. very different, and it was like our second one or who first was, one. Was it Tina? Ed O'Neill. Oh, Ed O'Neill. Oh my Ed God, O'Neil. you had Ed. We had Ed O'Neill as our first one. Oh, Are he you was fucking our first, kidding me? very one. first. I, was he like? No, look he at was, his watch. No, no. listen. He I'll calls. We happened. all have the same manager, me and Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. Gervitz. yeah. Gervitz is and Ed's. So he would call and go, hey, Ed saw you on this. He wanted me to tell you. He thought this was funny. Ed, he would do that mm-hmm. now and then, which is a very cool thing. I like to do it. He's older school. I do it on someone's Instagram. I will DM say, hey, I just saw you on this thing. You were funny. Or, hey, I just saw right, this Right, right, right. And so I like getting those feedback from people. And then when he did it, and then we said, we're doing the show, he told Gervitz, yeah, I'll come on right away. We hadn't even started. He goes, yeah, I'll do it. And so he, he likes world. comedy, he likes Dana. Yeah. And so we, he was super cool. And right away, our first one, it was kind of about SNL. You know, it's like general. Like, but, like for five minutes. Yeah. And we go, you host SNL. He goes, yeah, I didn't really like it. And then it was silent. <laughs> and then we go, what else is going on? And he I, had the most interesting story. I stories. had heard things about him anecdotally. Um, and also met him and this and that. And I, it was our first one. So I didn't know we had to emphasize SNL that much. So no, it for, for 45 matter. minutes, I got fascinated by his childhood. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. He told a Youngstown, story. Youngstown, Ohio. The Popeye yeah. fire, you know, the, the, the martial arts mm-hmm. guy, yeah. the tough guy with no ego about it. Because, you know, sometimes I stop, I whisper in the bar. I get real soft, you know. And you could see he's making a fist. And the, the guys, the bullies are Let's leaning in. Cl- and he goes, then I drop the hammer. So I was so fascinated by <laughs> yeah. a Hollywood actor who first doesn't give a fuck about Hollywood. None. Or at all. None. Fame. Zero. And was almost a made guy in New York. Yeah. A yeah. real football player. Like a legitimate badass guy who's so alpha male, he's he doesn't wear it. Yeah. And, and started honestly. in the theater. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like actually he's like has yeah. this like really heavy he training and everything. A great actor. So he was one of our favorites. Maybe it's because he's our first. <laughs> well, he's also super cool. He knew we were new at it, but we're just it's just a bullshit session, so there was really no super wrong way to do it. And he had so many good story after story that we got 
entranced by that stuff. And then it was it was a fun one. So what was he like for you? We got a he's lot of the good best. feedback. He's the best. Yeah, I mean, you, you don't fuck with, with you don't you don't fuck with Ed. Right. But he's just mostly just a, a, a he's fantastic. A char- charmer. He, we would joke that he has a uh, a book. We would all refer to Ed O'Neill chapter nine because he'd be like, "Why sit? <laughs> no, why stand when you can sit? I want to see. Why sit when you can lie down? <laughs> why come to work when you can be at home? <laughs> like every the, the minute he got there, he'd look at his watch and go, "What? When are we rapping? Hey. We do a rehearsal and he'd go, I think we got it. We're like, we have not <laughs> rolled like, cameras. Well, we, shot it yet. <laughs> we have not one foot out the door. <laughs> well, and he one day he did leave, mm-hmm. drove away. They're like, we're not done. He go, what? He had no idea. Um, he just, he works really fast. He's very smart. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he doesn't waste any time. And he also is like, never start the day in a sweater. You'll regret it. He has all <laughs> these like bits of wisdom. For a movie. Because one day we were shooting this outdoor, like the family's playing touch football. We started shooting at, you know, 7 a.m. Mm-hmm. When it's cold. And it, we're cold. So we like all, oh, can I get a sweater? Can I get a-? Yeah. And then it's two in the afternoon. So and up. he's like, just crosses his arms. goes, Never start in a sweater. And we're like, your chapter Because you have to match for people. I chapter love eight, that. Ed O'Neill. He has so much wi- wisdom. Did yeah. you direct him ever? Uh, yes, I did have to direct him. Is it hard directing everybody? No, you just like, you just make sure the cameras are in the right place and walk just away. Go, when you get him in, you go, okay, he's coming. So let's be ready. Yeah. You know, let's be really ready because you're not even going to get a whole take. Like, I think we got it. <laughs> like we, we haven't we haven't rolled yet. So yeah, that was terrifying. But well, he's that's wonderful. from experience. That when you got a neurotic director and you're doing wearing everybody out, wearing the crew out, wearing the over. Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. who's you. neurotic in this story? Is no, this not me? you? A, a, oh. Not okay. you. <laughs> no. You're a, prepared. I could tell you, I've Julie had, would I be prepared. I had a director once, so that you're just going to drop bullets. On it's a close up. Yeah, I'm going to say an hour. On dropping bullets? Yeah. Oh, they, that could be reset. Just a little, okay, a little frame different and just like that. Were and you I, even in the shot or no, just your hand? But I was watching and realized, okay, this guy is in a sandbox and right now he's dropping bullets and he doesn't want to ha- go in and have dinner. Right. He does not want it yeah. to be over. Right, and right. So that right. kind of director just exhausts the shit out yeah. of everyone. But yeah. if you have it, O'Neill, like you're smart. You went over and said, Ed, what are you going to do here? Right. We'll be on you like this. Right. That's it. Yeah. And it's more about the people around him. And I mean, yeah. Ed is, and if you tell him where you're starting and where you're finishing, he he knows where to go. And the mm-hmm. man is so savvy. And he was so great with the kids because they were, you know, they started, they were 11. And he would be like, you know, bring them aside and tell them this is, you know, you you, know, you don't want to cross in the middle of a scene because then they got to film you twice. Like things so like that. All the old school <laughs> All tricks. the old school, uh-huh. like find a comfortable place and uh, to the not in the middle, but to the left or the right of the scene. So, you know, they're, mm-hmm. they, they, you don't have to be in every single shot. Oh, in the background when they're shooting close-ups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He knows shit. all the tricks. Cross off before, say your line and cross off. <laughs> and then you'll never have to <laughs> So he's about seen. conserving energy. He is, you know what? It A little goes a long way mm-hmm. with him and he knows it. He's, yeah. he's, he's By the way, fantastic. all those tricks and it still works. It's not like people are like, oh, now it's bad. It's like, no, it's still good. You just cut the horse shit out because there's a lot of, Fluff and bullshit when they do overtakes. I remember we were doing so many takes on uh, Dickie Roberts. Oh, a couple people remember in the back? Knocking Fudge. Dickie Roberts, <laughs> a comedy starring David Spade yeah. from yes. 1997. The very last day we have. Brick, wall, waterfall. Dickie thinks he's got it all, but I don't. But <laughs> you he don't, it. but he don't, but I do. But I do. So Ooh, boom, b- boom with the, with the attitude. So boom Peace, with punch, attitude. Captain Ed Crunch. Crunch. I got <laughs> I something you can't, can't touch. touch, which is really problematic, that line. And the, like a, a no, ten year old girl, say it now. a ten year old girl is going peas punch Captain Crunch. I got something you can't touch, and they cut back to David going, and you're like, she's telling me I can't. That you can't touch yeah, her. That's the right thing to say. But, well, it's still <laughs> kind of fucked it's up. A, it's a song. It's a little fucked up. And then she goes. Bang bang points down there. Choo choo train. train. Wind me up. I do, <laughs> do my thing. thing. What's his, no. where does this go? Fudge no. lemonade. No. Where does this go? Where yeah, that's that, a dirty song. Mic drop? Well, that's dirty. Well, David. I mean, Dana's a dirty man. Yeah. Oh my I, God. My, look mind, at this. my mind is in the gutter. No, Julie. he's I, he I, has to I, keep I me in check. I do sexual thoughts all the time, and no one wants to know what I'm thinking. <laughs> Dana keeps me in check because I get a little uh, R-rated on the thing. You get a little R-rated, on but this. you get you have editing power. 
Well, we don't take right. It out. We don't like to edit much, you mm. know. But yeah, sometimes David will go oh, on a little push, and I'm like, hey, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that, that. Yeah, maybe not that. No, I think we said once that homeless people sometimes have really good hair and huge dicks, and it's not fair. And then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but so it's does, funny. It's true. So a lot of people. Just like in general. It's all not fair. I don't like any of it. <laughs> I don't, I don't no, like home, it. Home, but a lot of people don't have their pants around their ankles. hair and a big ankles. dick pisses yeah. you off. Yes, there we go. And you don't care if they're living under an underpass. Or in Truesdale. Or in Truesdale. Still envious. Still, even though they, still, they live in a cardboard box. Envious, and they have the two mad. metrics that he really wants most. Yeah, yeah. Giant hair and a huge <laughs> And a giant dick. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, we're working on it. Hey, Scott. Yeah, we're working on running out of time, but working on it. We're running out of time. I've never said running out of time in life, but I'll get there. Anyway, we're really our guest today. We're no. going to start now. Okay, now, Julie, do you guys can ask me questions or whatever yes, it is Yes, be well, normal. I, should we just do one SNL? Song? No, no. Well, Let I, me tell you my finishing story. That oh, and, I, and please, Dickie Roberts, we're do. done. Dickie Roberts out now. You can on, take it if you want. I just don't understand it. <laughs> that was a gift I got. I don't it's She's looking at her fly on the wall. It's a little creepy. I don't know if it's a lunch pail or what is it's it? It's just There's, a little bit like something like you made in leather tooling class. at like, Tandy. in there. So. Uh, this is a, uh, I was given... Oh, people can't We're see this, but it's a leather, fly on the wall. A leather, it's a leather or something, and I, it was, I was giving it backstage. It's fly on the wall. It's very sweet. I have to put it back where it belongs. Okay, yeah. sorry. Go ahead. Okay, so at the end of the movie, like you were saying, Dick we had Roberts. Sam Weisman was the director, and he was great. The whole time was great. We we moved quickly. That's always. I'm sorry. A does Dana mm-hmm. always like an old lady at a matinee unwrapping her Werthers? No, this is. Yeah, I hate people who do this in a movie theater. It's a drama. It's <laughs> doing it. Fucking eat the can. Yeah. So anyway, go ahead, David. Thank I God, just, Dana <laughs> takes the heat. He's eating a protein it's just bar over there. You're like, <laughs> David got me into protein bars. Like They're the I, best. Now I, I'm not even hypoglycemic, but I'm like, I guess I better have a bite of one. You have to. I'm eat. gonna wait till the story's over. This is the Dickie Roberts. Lifetime Achievement <laughs> Story Award <laughs> starring David Spade. We all know that when you move quickly in a movie, like if Julie's uh, director, she's got like this, you know, yeah. she, I know how she is and she's smart thinking ahead and she mm-hmm. will keep that set moving. You could direct that me. That keeps I'll, I'll, morale I'll, up. Now, on this movie, everything was going pretty, pretty, pretty good. But at the last day, we were wrapping. We said we we're going to wrap around five early because we only had a couple things to do. So we planned a party. And then we said, oh, well, and then everyone will stay and we'll have a catering and all shit. We wrapped at uh, twelve thirty in the night, and I at it, night at night like yeah. at a.m. And we missed a party, and I think, bless his heart, the director had rapophobia, and that's what Dana was talking about. They don't want to go home. They don't want it to be over, and they keep shooting. They're playing and, keep, and making up things box. to shoot, basically. But they, they also they, they they have overlords and people at studios being like, "You didn't get this. You didn't no, cover it," and sure. they start to doubt themselves, and they're like, "They know they have it, but they're like, uh, I might have to shoot it, like you know, sure. three yeah, quarter." POV then, from right. the squirrel uh, shooting up, and they're <laughs> like, "No, we didn't get that." And they're like, "What the fuck are you doing out there?" It so is the a next methodology day, of some companies: just cover the shit out of it, and, and then we'll make we'll, the movie in post. Exactly, make it in editing. It's it's an old. Uh, thing they do and even on Sandler movies like if he's not there because he, usually he sort of uh, masterminds the whole thing and if I'm on a movie and he's producing it then they want to know they're, they're second guessing what will he well, exactly. be looking for exactly but you're in him with him so it, it's fun when you're in with him when it's not you have to do a little extra coverage yeah I get. I, I don't know I've you know been I mean? I've been with him you're just, like I've been blessed to be in the good ones where Adam's in them <laughs> Every movie I do with Adam, I just did two cameos. They both were not his biggest box office. Jack, what were they? Jack and Jill and Little Nicky. All very oh, funny. Little Nicky is a big cult hit, though. Yes. Yeah. That one is yeah, people love it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore are huge now with young kids. Yeah. Again. Because those 90s comedies, early knots comedies, they were just funny and light. What's My a knot? I don't know. How do you? What's what's two thousand to two thousand nine? Is that the That's knots? The aughts. Aughts. The it's aughts. Not the knots. <laughs> I've been saying that for two years. The Jason and the Arger like, knots. Oh. It's like that. It's what you didn't want to do in the aughts. <laughs> That's a knot. Okay, we talked about this the other day. And what's two thousand ten to two thousand nineteen? Oh, I don't have any idea. That's the teens. The naughty teens. The naughty teens. <laughs> are you a naughty teen? The, and what are we into now? It's a in website. Twenties. We're, we're in the roaring twenties. We're, we're up to the like. The We're 20s. in the Roaring Twenties after a now, pandemic. Now, finally Roaring Twenties. Just like 100 years ago. What was your strong turn on ER? I it played said, a woman named Roxanne. What do you do? I don't I made out Roxanne. with, uh, I was somebody's, I was a 
I can't remember what what my role, what my character was. She did insurance or something. Yeah. And I ended up with Noah Wiley. Strong turn. Strong turn. Um, who did you give a BJ to in Horrible Bosses? Uh, Just look at my notes. Jason Bateman. Was it? Close. No, I'm guessing. Sudeikis. It was Sudeikis, Sudeikis. but you never see it. You just hear the <laughs> improv remember. where I say your balls are so smooth. <laughs> <laughs> and that, was that, when you that was your ad lib <laughs> and they ad-lib. kept it in yeah <laughs> your balls are so sweet. and who was your husband oh Kevin Spacey mm-hmm. but it was before <laughs> <laughs> did you leave the window open <laughs> <laughs> Kevin Spacey <laughs> Kevin Spacey this was he was at the he was top of his game yep. we did not there were no brilliant no actor one of the biggest versus- stars at the time, probably it was huge. This Brilliant was this actor. was even pre uh, the House, of oh, yeah. had, House of Cards. He still had he still had some he still had some life in him. When no, you were you were you're I'm still. It's like it says you're fluent in Neutrogena. I'm reading this wrong. No, I'm not. <laughs> She's a spokesman. You were a spokesman for Neutrogena. For I Italy. was twice. You, fluent in Neutrogena. I was a spokesman for Neutrogena twice <laughs> when I was a younger person and then they got me to be as an old person. They and need then old they, people on that. Then they didn't renew my contract because they said they needed someone who looked more mature, Nicole Kidman. Hmm. Do you know what that's a, a word that makes you sound <laughs> drunk? What are the two words that make you sound drunk? <laughs> Even, <laughs> it, say judicial. Oh yeah. I went to judicial and I got some Judi- Judi- You're right. Those they, two words. You're stone sober. You will sound yeah, drunk. Yeah, that's, that's that's a world audience. jerk. Neutrogena and judicial. Judi- I remember seeing judicial judicial Julie on the back of a magazine in a Neutrogena picture. Yeah. That, that was, was yeah, and then one. you you were finally like, okay, it's I guess she's worthy of this mm. Spade Hall of Fame. It was it was already rolling mm-hmm. by then. <laughs> I think it already you and rolled. I. No, she was on Maybe. Ed, <laughs> and then you went to Boston Legal. Uh huh. And then you did. Do your, we just do IMDb? Did, yeah, we you just work with William. I'm Shatner. reading. I don't did really you go know. with uh, James Spader, William Shatner? Was that on that on that? That too? was James Spader and William Shatner and Candace Bergen. That's who oh, I was candy. most. Candy. Candy. Oh, okay, you guys. Back to SNL. Oh, she was on SNL. <laughs> five, she's a five timer, isn't she? Yeah. She, sure. I had an Asian character named Ching Change, and she was in those sketches. <gasps> oh, I know. Anxiety I'm, like, I'm like, I need to it leave now. It was 1986. <laughs> I would never do it again. I swear. <laughs> but it was, uh, it was a, a character done very lovingly and sweetly. But um, I was she horrified was part on of that the, in the audience. I'll tell you that much. Do you worry about that? Like, like I'll get someone. Look, someone's going to cancel up. you because no. what you did in '86. Because I know, well, I know where it came from. I know the intent in my heart. Intentions matter, so I got it. It was based on someone I knew, mm-hmm. and no one said anything. Who had a pet chicken, or appeared to have a pet chicken <laughs> on a leash in his front yard, yeah. which is which is very sweet. I just yeah, I it's 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 crappy now that you have to worry about that. Like, I think about it all the time. Like, I, am I going to say mm-hmm. something that I think is funny and then, you know. Well, they tried to ding uh, Ben Stiller, who's brilliant, about Tropic Thunder. And it just says, they don't have time for. But Tropic Thunder was like ahead well, of its time. satirizing narcissistic sure. actors who will do anything to get an Academy Award. It has nothing to do with anything else. So right. he just didn't apologize. And Oh, was that for Simple? Oh, it was for Simple Jack. No. And also Robert yeah. Downey Jr. And also Jr., Robert Downey Jr. An right. Australian actor who was so narcissistic and so desperate that, that he, he does he... blackface, essentially. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it was, but I thought what that was Simple podcast Jack was smart. trouble too. Simple Jack, I. Well, that was making fun. I always say to yeah. my kids, like, if Great. you see people play, men, you know, mentally deficient human beings, they always have short khaki pants and awkward haircuts and big ears. And so I saw that in two <laughs> actors, I won't name them, who got the Academy Award for yeah. playing a character mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. So Ben was satirizing yes. the cliche that if you're that type of person, you need to have really short khaki pants and a really short haircut and exactly. have your ears stick out. Right. And that, and he was satirizing it, but yeah. sometimes the satire gets you canceled. Well, it gets yeah, blurry. and it's it's I I'm I'm not against if you just look at it from the surface. You, you know, I, I, I there's cringy things all over. You know, movies and con- it's fine. I mean, I'm 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 open minded. I haven't watched Wayne's World recently. I'm yes. not sure would would I would it be like we're good on that one because we didn't do any drugs. The only thing we what? did was we'd see a girl and and thrust so her ka-ching. hips and say swing uh, swing swing. Sorry, swing. That, and so it's pretty. Pretty, you know, sphincter says what? Schwing. It's pretty benign. Cream of some young guy. Do you do cream of some young guy? Austin Powers, <laughs> uh, which is a brilliant trilogy, went harder at some of those things. Okay. I don't. God, that might have been a Wayne's World. 
Did you say uh, I like some gangbang chicken? Is that I don't. I just know that it made all those movies made me laugh really hard. And I revisited. We just I produced a movie for um, Disney Plus. It's the first Disney, the first TV fourteen movie they've done called Prom Pact. It just came out last week, mm. and it has like red solo cups and people. Uh, reference sex and there's gay characters and oh. it was during it kind of fell between the Bob Chapek going out mm-hmm. and the and, and Bob right. Iyer come back in people were not really paying close attention and I can't decide if we're going to be like if Disney's going to love us and hire us again and again or they are like freaking out because they actually have characters saying some racy r- racy things so 14 means mm-hmm. just 14 and up instead of just totally G Kids, or PG. exactly. Right. It's not even PG. It's like it's like yeah. There's yeah. there's some content up in here, um, but yeah, it can some content. Up there's in some here. content up in here. There's some co- yeah. content all up in here. I don't know. Yeah, what. We get some content up in here, but it mm-hmm. you know you get concerned that you're going to get in trouble later on. Yeah, yeah. Um, I I'm been around so long and no one cares about me. I'm I'm uncancelable. I mean, I can't. No one would cancel me because they don't even know Dana, to know to look you me t- up. I'm too I'm too superstitious. I don't want you to get canceled. Listen, the well, Emperor's we, New Groove. We we had to take out all the dry humping scenes. Oh mm-hmm. no, and it was animated. So mm-hmm. the um, mm-hmm. but for that for Prom Pact, we decided to to. to address all the 80s problems mm. uh, and the John because it's a reference it's a it's all like an homage to John Hughes but then we have to talk about how problematic John Hughes was so we watched all those movies again and, Ferris Bueller uh, Ferris Bueller holds up well that seems kind of like an iconic comedy Breakfast yeah. Club Breakfast Club mostly pretty well but there's some edge well, there. I mean now that we go over to like weird science oof mm. Weird science is Oof. God. I love that. Not what. What is the main ding? What subject? Was I mean, it? I it, are the character sexist. in in the in prom pack says it's an episode of SVU. Like his, they, it's like you create a woman and Beautiful. just to bang her. I think. Oh, oh yeah. Oh. Weird science. I got you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, yeah. Mm, uh, Revenge of the Nerds, very problematic. Sure. Yes. There's some really- All those movies are like drill a hole through walls yeah. to watch girls Porky's, naked. That was it's like, geez. Couldn't yeah. even touch that. And glory make sure the girls hole passed out galore. before Remember that one? Glory hole galore. I think that was a actually movie? a movie. Porn. That might have been a porn song. I don't, I don't think... know where I saw it. <laughs> that's a I made that up. They're going, really? That's a movie? That's a movie. It's like, a movie uh... that couldn't be made today, today <laughs> for 20, Bob. Glory hole There's a great glory hole on Peak. <laughs> this is the kind of content that Dana's not comfortable with. Today. I know he's he's jumping in though. Today I like it. today it's all we're hanging it all out. It's this all, will be one episode. This one won't air. My wife will be driving and she'll be. <laughs> what's the prom pact? <laughs> no, what is the prom pact? What do you mean? What is it? Yeah, what's the actual pact? Oh, it's uh that the the two best friends in the movie agree that they are they've never they're gonna done have any, a gangbang. <laughs> no, they've never gone to any of the high school stuff. They're both like nerds and really serious. They're like, well, they've never gone to prom. They're like, fine, we'll do it together. And then the the lots of complications ensue. Yeah, don't give everything. Away. I'm not gonna give it so away. So it's You're two gonna guys like it. or two girls? Two girls. When no, it, no, a girl and a guy. They're best friends. Oh, the best friends. Are they gonna go together? Or yeah, they're gonna go together. Part, right? Now gonna go together. streaming or coming up? Now streaming. It'll be now streaming. streaming. You would Plus. actually like. You would actually. Like, I don't know what your taste is. You actually like it because it's kind of sweet and it's kind of cute. Mm. Sweet and cute. I don't it's mind. That. It's sweet and cute, and there's I like some pervy things. Space Odyssey. And there's some pervy things. And I like the first Alien. You like 2001: Space Odyssey? Yeah. Sober. I've seen it 40 <laughs> times. How um, many of those times were you unaltered? No, he loves No, no, it. unaltered. I've memorized. Uh, Out of Africa is my wife and I's whoa, touchstone whoa, whoa, whoa. movie. 2000, did you just say you have it memorized? Yeah. Well, kind of. There's only like eight words. Yeah. I know, that's oh, why I... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, open, I remember re- Open the pod bay door, Open the pod bay door, Hal. No I'm day. sorry, you know, I can't yeah. do that. There's mm-hmm. not much... In high school, when we would see it, and I would say, "Open the bathroom door, Hal." We would. They were stoned. My friends were stoned. The Volkswagen Bug in nineteen sixty nine, and I would go, "Open the bathroom door." Instead of pop, they would laugh for like an hour and a half, you know, because they were high. But you know, I anyway, I never it's understood. It's it is brilliant and way beyond me in a lot of ways. I feel like I it's, missed. It's just. Is there a better topic for a film than how we got here? And the idea we're, we've been seeded by aliens, basically, that infused uh, primates with intelligence mm. that become That's us. That's what it was about. I, I mean, the greatest mic drop in a movie is with the discovery that he can use the bone as a weapon. 
the, how he takes his time and then that music and then he throws it, it turns a spaceship. I mean, God, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> Julie, Julie, go with on. me. Well, what's your favorite movie besides Wayne's World? I mean, Dickie Roberts? I love Dickie Roberts, of course. And <laughs> but iconic, <laughs> here's a question. <laughs> movies you, you watch you t- eh. every couple of years. Movies that like, like for me, The Godfather, one and two, I'll see every couple of years. Uh the, that is just, that's a real dude. Yeah. I think that that's. I know a, what's yours, Scarface. Dude, um, maybe. Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Oh, Jim Carrey. Good right? one. Jim that's Carrey. a very heavy, cool. Did Charlie Kaufman write that? Charlie Kaufman wrote it, and mm-hmm. Michelle Gondry. Is that how you say his name? I'm mm-hmm. probably saying it wrong. That's his Directed. name. That's her name. Yeah. That, that, yeah. <laughs> That's her name. <laughs> You're an asshole. <laughs> uh, any Charlie Kaufman movie, I feel like you can watch again and again and again because it's like He's, they're so yeah. layered. Was the one with Nicolas Cage. Is that the one? Or someone Nicolas Cage, go- that was, that was, the, um, that was or- the one, uh, not being John Malkovich, that was, was the one. adaptation. Yes. Oh, yeah. Adaptation was phenomenal. Charlie Kaufman wrote on the variety show I did in 96 did? with Louis C.K., and he did? Yeah, Charlie Kaufman. You never say him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wait, what? Charlie, what was that like? Uh, Charlie is, you know, he's brilliant. He's quiet. He's, you know, just, he was just around doing crazy stuff. But he would like write a, like a, a sketch that would be easily digestible to an American audience. <laughs> like, I can't see <laughs> well, it. Well, the show was essentially, essentially canceled after 12 minutes of airing. You know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they let us, we'd already, but the first sketch six was episodes. I see. We went from 16 million to 2 million as I was playing Clinton breastfeeding puppies. <laughs> so that we, we did not have a commercial bone in our body. That from, was Disney. Home Disney bought ABC after we agreed to the deal, and so we were a square peg in a. Well, you went after Home Improvement, which was a very we followed family Spin show. City, Home Improvement. You followed Home Improvement, yeah, which is a great show. A but yeah, we, it just we were doing not, acidy, acidy, right. yeah. but we weren't. They thought we were blue. We weren't blue at all. We were no. just abstract. That's w- where Bill Clinton breastfeeding puppies. You're mm-hmm. not joking. That should have been out was the, two in the cold morning. opener. It was Louie's idea, not to blame Louie. We, we banked it a month before. Everyone wants to blame him. It's and okay. it was like, <laughs> he goes, Clinton's like, and I believe in our country. I know we're in a crisis. And he goes, and that's why I have. And then I'm just opening, buttoning the jacket, and you see these teats have been put uh, on mm-hmm, me. Mm-hmm. And then puppies are brought out. And I will feed these puffies like I feed a worried nation. You know, that kind of thing. A worried nation. <laughs> right after Spin City. What's going on? <laughs> Laugh track. <laughs> oh, my God. It makes me so happy to hear you do impersonations. I know. I'll it's do a, anyone you want. Really? I, but you do so many. Like, yeah. just right there, you just did You just did Bill Clinton and Michael J. Fox, but, like, barely, just, well, like, whiffing past them so perfectly. No, he can do... Uh, Trump Lately, with his, I've been doing... Trump with the Miranda rights. I do Trump... Um, I don't know. This will be after you can cut this out. When Trump got arrested, put it that way. <laughs> you know, you could put the cuffs on me, but you don't have to read me the rights because I wrote the rights. I wrote the rights. I could write a lot of things. I wrote it with a lovely lady named Miranda. I told her you have the right to remain silent. She put it down. And we're going to do it. Some people said no, but we're doing it anyway. We wrote the whole thing. So that's just a poem basically for me. Do you want to hear my Fauci poem? Yeah. Yes. It's a poem that maybe wouldn't work anymore. To me, they're all Fauci poems. Okay. I know I told you when you had the, the COVID shot, you'd be dancing in the streets. Okay. I missed it by that much. All right. <laughs> now you have two COVID shots, three boosters. You're getting and giving COVID to another <laughs> guy who's got two boosters and three shots. <laughs> That's why I'm introducing the daily COVID shot. <laughs> Every day you go to your health care provider, you get your shot. By the time you get to your car, you got no immunity, but it's a beautiful. 39 seconds. I'm Tony Fauci, and from the bottom of my all new leather Fauci's go fuck yourself. <laughs> I had to get the end. Who would That's you? Cathartic. I'm sorry if I've done that before on the podcast. Not would, many times. No, would you, you like to go? Would you ever go back on SNL and do characters? Yeah, of course I would. Like, but like, Come on, in- let's get real. My father's father lost his job. No joke. <laughs> I came around here because of David Spade is the funniest guy, funniest guy, funniest guy I've ever seen. It's the people, the pirates, the pub, pirates, the caravan. Sorry. I would. I like doing it on the podcast because there's no rehearsal, no script, no one's yelling at me. David's yeah. not trying to control me. Right. Because on love SNL, that. they don't, you know, they don't make as much fun as, as Biden as would maybe. 
as you would like to. Well, as, as just split it down the middle. Just keep mm-hmm. it fun. Make fun of both sides. Yeah, they just have that guy, that um, Jim. James J- Austin J- Johnson. Is he's brilliant. just so good. His it, his cold open this jazz. last week. Yeah, it's it's unbelievable. He, yeah. he, he was doing singing and he is amazing. He's so good at it that it mm-hmm. kind of doesn't matter. It's too good. It's so but yeah, good. I don't. My style is like I don't want to teach or be taught, so I'm not going to try to overtly <laughs> sneak in. A political statement. I don't like preaching to a choir and getting right, woo! right, 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 right. So I'm trying to find what is fucking funny about these right. people. Both these two guys are really funny, yeah. rhythmically, personality wise. I at first when Biden came out, it was just like grandpa of the country. Yeah, Trump made everyone crazy. Yeah, he's like, yeah, come on, folks. He was very gentle. And then he started yelling. That was like, what a great hook. You know, he whispers. <laughs> Guess what? The rich don't pay their fair share. They got to pay their fair share. It's a fair share. And it goes up and screams like the grumpy old man, right? Basically, the ball went in his yard. It's mine now. Get off, get off my lawn. Mm. But to your point, uh, I don't know what the point was. No, was I no just point. wanted, would you want to go on and do any, uh, like, do you guys miss that? The you, shoe you, was on the other foot. You know, you were right. I don't about, know how not to ask questions. No, no, no. We, we like it when you ask You're questions. You're not pushy enough. The point is, yes, uh, it's fun. I go back there and do a guest spot. They That's could really easily fun. bring Dane in to cover. Somebody. I love being on it. Uh, I love sketch comedy. Um, yeah. And I love watching the people doing it now. But if you're doing a small comedy club and riffing or podcasting, I get a lot of a fix off that. Too, yeah. You know? Yeah. You don't or it's need not to going do through 100 channels and, you know, getting edited. Oh, you watch even the Mark Twain. We had a great time, but they took 90 minutes out of the show. So they did. I got four jokes lost. I only did four and a half minutes. I lost four jokes. Do you jokes. want to do one of the lost jokes? Do you want to do one right oh, now? Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. What if they suck? Um, I said, uh, I said, oh, in this uh, woke age of PC and comedy, please, I think Mark Twain would be the only one that would not win the Mark Twain Award. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder. Of course, that wasn't going to be. <laughs> I said that, he, that was designed to I be said, cut. I said, You're like, he here's a freebie. They, yeah. You can the them prompt, some... <laughs> they held up scissors with their fingers. <laughs> like, nope. <laughs> that is the most low-hanging fruit. You insulted Mark Twain. I said he had some iffy stuff. Uh, and then, oh, here's a, here's a harmless one. Mm-hmm. It, I've done a lot of movies with Sandler. I, instead of listing them, just go to your unmarried uncle's house and look at his posters in his bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> that's my movies with Sandler. Do over. That's fun. That's harmless little jabs. That is, that's harmless. And it I makes did fun one. of me. Did the Dennis thing make it? I don't think so. Oh, on the actual show? No. no I don't think what so. What was yours? Dennis Miller about Sandler getting the Twain, if I can remember it. Uh, criminy. So the Sandman got the Mark Twain prize. All right. That's a pithy moniker. One of the great minds of the last millennia has a Cracker Jack motif, okay? Sandman makes 60 movies, gets a tiny whistle for his effort. <laughs> so that's just like a little... They were working with... Uh, yeah, we got a good Nancy. What do you say? Because Nancy <laughs> Pelosi was in the front row. There. That's me channeling Nancy Dennis. Pelosi was in the front row? And Paul mm-hmm. Pelosi, yeah. Mm-hmm. How, how is Paul? You look okay? He's Paul looked still, great. I did, I did Pelosi to her. I raining. said, I do you. It's very exaggerated. The, you, the Republicans drive you crazy, and you always look like you just sat on something cold and wet. <laughs> and then I go, <laughs> <laughs> she was not smiling. It Scissors by the television. Scissor time. Scissors. <laughs> she even did it. She's like, mm-mm. She goes, guess who's the exec, exec producer of this thing? <laughs> the lights started flashing. People are evacuating. Yeah. Attention. Oh my God. Attention. Attention. Breeze yeah. <laughs> remove. Go to the closest. So, we had a blast. Fearless that night at or stupid. Well, but the 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 the, the dinner D Squad dinner uh, here for <laughs> spillover dinner. <laughs> right. Spillover dinner for those who were not going to DC. <laughs> there, mm-hmm. every everyone got up and they everybody gave their did the right. a, yeah. a loose not a tight five but a, like a <laughs> loose seven tribute uh, and and tribute and there was some really dicey stuff and I'm not going to yeah. name names I'm not going to call right. anybody out but I was like holy crap these people have no fear. Right. Well, at the Kennedy Center, yeah, everyone was well dressed. It was almost like a corporate audience. There was a little now. more gravitas about the situation. But there, that was like playing to your peers it in was the your audience. Friends, so, Most yeah. of the comedians were in the audience. But yeah, fearless. So no Schneider. What? Come on. No. They're poisoning no, he was our water. There. He was there both. He and he, and he, he Adam was there. Or oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, Schneider was there. Schneider was there and yeah. he and he he performed in that? He did and, and then he sang. He sang yeah. mm-hmm. Oh, amazing. Okay. He can sing. I, I he sang uh Grow old with you. Grow old with you. That was one of Sandler's songs. He can from, really, oh, yeah, he's yeah. Can yeah. really sing. He sang. He's a great singer. On the road, when you go on the road with Adam, he he goes up and sings uh, "Now or Never" as Elvis. 
Because he, <laughs> he that's was right. I've, I've seen him sing. That's right. right. And he fucking belts it. What I say. he gets a he, they go crazy oh, right. because he opens because he can mm-hmm. actually he sing. He can sing, and he was Elvis in Japan for six oh. months, so he knows how to do it. Wait for real or yeah. like as a joke? No, he went there no. when we started stand up, and he did. He tells a Elvis ten minute story on this podcast about he, how he became. Tiny Elvis in Japan. Was it, it was a, a big uh, hit. You said 10 minutes like it was a bad thing. I feel like it no, was... No, no, it was great. Okay, I mean, because it, it was a lot of building blocks of how it came about and how he became <laughs> yeah. Tiny Elvis in Tokyo it wasn't and tiny crush him. No, he would refer to, he said I was Tiny Elvis. When we got to SNL, <laughs> he, he, he said he was Tiny. He didn't, well, Jane I'm just tiny, threw that I don't know if you're like, confusing because we did tiny. SNL. Didn't he the, call himself Tiny Elvis? The first <laughs> show of the season when we came back from summer. <laughs> he did a sketch where Nicholas he was Nicolas Cage Elvis. was the host That's and we it. did Tiny Elvis. That's where I got it from. Because it's okay. you and it's me. I'm Tiny Elvis. I'm Tony, <laughs> and wasn't he keyed in on his shoulder or something? Yeah, Nicholas Cage That's why, sorry Rob, that's where I got Tiny Elvis from. Was Tiny Elvis on a... On the on the dashboard, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> sex. Not like I'm Tom Brady over here, you know. <sighs> you guys really just free fly it. No, they free don't. fly. Okay, okay here we go. You're like, well, there's no I'm, there. There's, there's no there. I'm like, do they head towards something? I'm most crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Fill in the blank with Julie. Oh yeah, Bowen. here we go. This is here a quiz. Oh god. Okay, let's sing. Fill These are in easy. the blank with Judy. Yeah, Julie harmonize, Bowen. David. Harmonize. No, he's got it. Fill in the blank. I'm most crazy when. Fill in the blank. I'm most crazy when. Oh. That, that you could be get an answer. When you go to bed. Oh, it could no, be an no, answer. No, no, no. I'm most crazy when around my kids when they're when they're jackasses. That's perfect. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, have you ever gone right on answer. and checked somebody's celebrity net worth? Because <laughs> <laughs> I do it a lot. <laughs> I think they're. Yes. Have you checked your own net worth? And, yes. Is it and accurate? No. And that's how I know that the other ones right. aren't accurate. Yeah. I was mm-hmm. like, that is so inaccurate. Yeah. Okay. You know, that's, uh, I think what they do is they, you're, you're, what you've made, they guess on everything you've ever shot with no oh. taxes and never spending money. Right. And then you've never spent a, a nickel of that money and that, right. You've never put a kid through private no school. Divorce. Right. Like no divorce. Yeah. Okay. Gross cash turns into tissue paper in a fireplace. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not a complaint. We're very privileged. Turns but, into yeah, Leno's like, ear. <laughs> uh, <laughs> remember when Leno goes, my ear, he goes, you know, when your he face said catches, that, he goes, paper. when your face catches on fire, your ear is the first to go. <laughs> we are, he goes, it goes up that. like tissue paper. He goes, there's nothing there. When I read something <laughs> negative God. about myself, okay. my reaction is... Oh, p- panic. <laughs> panic and shame. And shame. so I don't. You don't shame say and fuck panic. these people. No, no. So I have a strict no reading about yeah. myself ever policy. I, I, I don't look at anything. I don't look at any picture. I don't read anything. It's too horrifying. Nothing. The smart is to believe the good, but don't believe the bad. That's no, what I but that you can't. If you believe the good, then you got to believe the bad. So you can't read the good. My mom used to always try and send me shit like that she, you know, cut out of the paper or mm-hmm. cut out of a mm-hmm. magazine go, but it's good. And I said, yeah, but I don't want the shit that's good because then yeah. then I have to believe it when they I'll, say I'll that I'm thing. like... Everyone sees this. Ten I'll examples of uh, how Dana Carvey was never funny. You know, I'm like, yes. <laughs> can I click Buzz off? Feed. We have, uh, Thanks, BuzzFeed. Concrete proof. <laughs> Here's David proof. Spades, not My funny. biggest indulgence is... Glasses. I'm not wearing them right now, but I really, I've spent an enormous- Oh, spending money. Spending that's money. It? That's an adult, yeah. What about I, your ski trip? Wow. My, but that's for the kids. I'll spend money on my kids, sure. I, yeah. So you could say my kids, but that's boring. Can we switch the answer, mm-hmm. judges? <laughs> last time, or oh, a little a little sort of uh, Barbara Walters, last time I felt brave. Yeah. Oh, wait. Well, how come you don't ask these questions? Because he's the brains of the oven. <laughs> okay. I'm just here for looks. Last time I felt brave. Yeah, you also can say pass. It can oh, be yeah, like a game it. show. No. Uh, wow. When you went down a uh, fucking... Well, right, devil's th- ball sack. No, I did not about- go down devil's ball sack. I was, I did go skiing with my kids, and they were trying to make me do a lot oh. of jumps. And so, physically brave, I actually did one. And it was terrifying, and I was sure I was going to break in okay. 10 pieces. I'm yeah. a good skier, but... Mm. I used to watch my kids go down a giant hill, laying on their stomach on a flexi. So it's little wheels, and the helmets are kind of not really on. And my wife could look, and I would always have to look away because of childhood yeah. trauma. No, you but can't. But one time I did look, and that was the bravest. Although my kids did say to me, Mom, I think if, if, if when I'm a parent, I'll never do this with my kids because it's so dangerous. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I just got told that my parenting was rough by my own kids. Mm-hmm. Things I have a hard time saying no to. 
I mean, you were offered a lot of things like charity oh, benefits. And if you could show oh, I up, say no could, to everything. Did you feel guilty at all? Oh or my you're God, just healthy I feel about so guilty. If mm-hmm. a friend hits me up for something that's mm-hmm. charity school, oriented, school, just... school, charity, all that. Yeah, I do a lot of stuff for my kids' schools. That mm-hmm. um, When you, you know. want to say no, how do you do it? Email, phone call, text, just can't. Ghost. Too busy right now. Or... If I want to say no, I, I'm, I'm out of town. Out of town. I'm out of town. Even if you're not, and then you have to hide out those. Days. Then you have to hide that weekend. Okay, here's but that's one's okay. interesting. It's worth it. Favorite, full circle, because we have a theme. Favorite, everyone has theirs. I know mine. Favorite SNL cast. Oh, full full cast. Well, or, or do we're well, doing like fantasy we football? We were part of a hybrid. Oh, I you just, can do fantasy football. You guys should do a fantasy football because then I you would could go. Do that, like, I mean, I would obviously have to have you guys. Uh, have to, yes. Uh, have to. There's, have to. there's <laughs> Hall of Famers in every cast. Yeah, uh, you know. I mean, who's the starting cast? Crew? My 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 starting lineup would have to be yeah, but there's some that. Are, Beck, no, I hate doing that because then I forget someone. No, I know, but like Beck Bennett. Who was in the last yes, kind of cast? Great cast. Quiet, member. quiet, slow roll for the first maybe four years, and then on fire for the last Is two Putin or three. With the shirt off. I mean, Putin with the shirt off. Um, uh, my, and then you've got mm-hmm. the guys who uh, Mikey Day and um, uh, the ones who play the the Trump brothers. Yeah. Um, the, but I'd say stuff. overall, I mean, you got to have Will Ferrell. Yeah. We know we have to have Will. You Love have to have him. Will. And Will knows we have to have Will. He's yeah, amazing. I mean, you, you he's do. amazing. He's into not. He's a we have to first have Bill Hader. You have to have Kristen Wiig. It goes on and on. You know, Keenan gave us a, a, yeah, which have a, Kenan. a future episode, but he gave a great answer. I guess all we can save it, but he said the women. The women since 2000, and of course, Sherry O'Terry is one of my favorites before yeah. that, and Jan Hooks and everybody. But if it's kind of been so dominant, oh, yeah. like never before in the history of yeah. the show, when yeah. you start adding them up. And if, yeah, no, mm-hmm. I agree. Do you like people to say oriented or orientated? Orientated isn't a word. I know, my friend says oriented, it that fucking sounds bananas. Orientated, say, hey, who says it? He goes, they're more family orientated, and I go, family orientated. People say it all the time. Mm. Oh, here's an easy one. I my knew favorite it wasn't exercise word, is. Exercise like with my body. Yeah, do you like walking? <laughs> do you do a stairmaster? Why do you ask hiking? these things? Because I, I'm out of bullets. I got nothing. Yeah. <laughs> we we, had, we were out a half hour over ago. and over in the sandbox a while ago. <laughs> um, it, my favorite. I exercise all the time obsessively yeah. because I'm crazy and I have to get my brain to shut up. Mm-hmm. So I, I ride a bike to nowhere a lot. I could have answered that. Yeah. Uh, okay, Julie. We know you got to run. Thank you for coming by. We're gonna go to a break. Uh, we have uh, everyone behind you. Go. She doesn't have to go. I know, she doesn't have to go. Have to go. They're like, we just really we need to be done with this. No, we did good though. We thought it was really good. There's a we were counselable in a couple segments, right? Counselable? No, no, counselable. I'm not really, I went to state school. I mean, yeah. Are you but you where are you from? Yeah. Montana. Montana and then and then the peninsula. Where Missoula. In Montana? Missoula. Was that did where you, you just I were? I was Missoula. just in Montana. I was, I was in Big Sky. I was there too. I was in Big Fork visiting relatives. I was in Big yeah. Dick. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is Big Dick Dixon County. I should have said Big, big Dick. Sky, Big Fork. You and were of down course, by Livingston yeah. then. I don't know. But I like it. I like it because you go skiing there and there's dudes in Carhartt jackets mm-hmm. and like no helmet. And they're like old school. Right. And then, you, you know, they're like, they come up here, they cut a butt. Dana drives up in his Volvo. I grew up in my Volvo. And they go, look at this city boy. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a poem. Well, 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 well. Looky what we got ourselves here. We got a city boy. You from Stockholm? Is that what y'all? City boy with your Swedish car driving all around. Oh, you got airbags? Oh, you got a little pillow. Can't you hit a grizzly bear? I sound like Chris Rock. Hey, sweetie pie. You got a little Do you have a Volvo, by the way? Do I have a Volvo? Yeah, I just want the audience to know who to no, follow. No, I don't have a Volvo. Do you have a Volvo? I do have a Volvo, <laughs> but I do not let's have a Volvo. Let's look at a clip of it. <laughs> let's go. Well, well, <laughs> well, 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 looky what we got ourselves. <laughs> we got a baby cut. Volvo. <laughs> That's right. what your plan is. Anyway. That, actually, I got to go. Julie, he has a great. lunch. All right, Midnight Toker. You guys work fast. That's good. One hour. We got to get them in and out. We don't want to... Uh, yeah, da, 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 da. We're it's not like Rogan. another pancake. <laughs> Ty stuff. Burrell is... The These greatest person that ever lived. Lightning, lightning round. Yeah. Jesse, oh, Jesse Ferguson uh, is... Uh, the most unrecognized of our cast is being freaking funny answers. as hell. Sophia... Vergara. Uh, Vergara. Sophia Vergara. Vergara. Is a, a, a 
heart of gold, the most generous. She's a queen. My kid just spent 12 hours with her two days ago um, because he went to see America's Got Talent and with another friend. Oh, she's there? And I said, if you have a chance, say hi to Sophia. She had cameras on him. She took pictures. Oh, she said it to me. She's the most generous, kind God, So you person. just had a blast. What's your impression show? of Sophia Varaga? Do you have one? Well, you have to, it has to be about somebody. Oh, the one that people really like, we said we were on on Ellen and they were saying, what's your relationship with, with Sophia like? And I said, she just, she keeps to herself and like, she lives in a castle, you know, yeah. like in the sky with like a That's beautiful man. Right. But every now and again, I'll get a call and she'll go, uh, Julie, this thing tonight, it is cocktail. I'm like, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> uh, what do we wear? It's cocktail. <laughs> Is it, it, well, I mean, you can wear a dress or you just have to look nice. But it's a cocktail. <laughs> like it's a cocktail. Like she has this very specific cocktail means something tight and to mm-hmm. the knee. And in evening okay. means tight and to the floor. <laughs> and tight. cocktail, she's like cocktail, you know, with like fruit or flour. And I'm like, so your dress can have fruits or flowers on it for cocktail, but not for evening. She's like, yes. <laughs> so that was, that's oh, Sophia. Do <laughs> you have a good ear? Or is it just, that's cool. You she you spend time around her. You the can't best way to it. learn someone is just to be around them. Yeah, just being around. You just them. start telling stories and talking for them, and then you realize you're doing an impression. Of jizz, yeah, jizz, mm-hmm. jizz. And what was Sandler's spillover party? Was that cocktail? It was cocktail. well for me. It was cocktail for Sandler. It was vagabond. <laughs> it, was, it was green jets parka. Vagabond. It was all of a I'm fluent Italian. You hear that, and you were you. I'm fake. I do fake Italian. You are very good at your fake Italian. Julie, well, the fake, exit is on the... Uh, hey, Linguini. Are you sitting there to some Linguini food a pasta. The exit's on the Julie fifth floor. Julie Bowen. There you go. I want to see this house. This has been a podcast presentation of Cadence 13. Please listen, then rate, review, and follow all episodes. Available now for free wherever you get your podcast. No joke, folks. Fly on the Wall has been a presentation of Cadence 13. Executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Chris Corcoran of Cadence 13, and Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. The show's lead producer is Greg Holtzman with production and engineering support from Serena Regan and Chris Basil of Cadence 13. 